Eggs. You may know them as the tiny oval things that baby chickens call home. Or from one of their collective nouns, the omelette, the scramble, the scary alien hatchery. Or you may be best acquainted with its chocolate incarnation, the official sugar-based mascot of Easter. In these times of divisive ideas, I think we can all agree what Jesus would have wanted is for his followers to worsen their diabetes. Which brings me on to a very recent scientific paper, widely reported in the media as one egg per day increases diabetes risk by 60%. This is familiar. We've heard similar things about the damaging effects of coffee, meat, or the music of Phil Collins. But then a week later, we see another study reported that tells us how healthy these things are, except with Phil Collins. What's really going on? These reports hinge on a certain type of study called observational, associational, or epidemiological. All big scary words, but all it means is that they track what people did for years, then see what diseases they got. For example, you track what foods people eat, then see if they get diabetes. Seems like an open and shut case. If they ate this, then got that disease, then the food must have caused it. Send the eggs to egg jail. The problem with that reasoning is that you can't know if there was another thing that you weren't tracking that caused the disease. For example, you could do an observational study where you measure the colour of people's fingers for years, then see if they get lung cancer. You'll find that people whose fingers turn yellow over those years are much more likely to have lung cancer. Does that mean that yellow fingers cause lung cancer? I hope not. Otherwise, The Simpsons is about to get a lot more bleak. All you can say is that you found an association. Then you would have to run a different type of study known as an interventional study, where you have two groups. One group whose fingers you actively colour yellow and one group where you don't. This way you control the variable and can see if the association is a cause or just an innocent association. The study about eggs being associated with diabetes actually showed that eggs were used in cakes and that those who ate a lot of cakes had more diabetes. Is that really a surprise? Does it justify the panic? As a story, it rivals such Pulitzer-worthy headlines as bears really do enjoy using woods as toilet or being Pope does imply you're a Catholic after all. When you combine a media system increasingly desperate for clicks and university publicity departments desperate to boost their profile and research funds, what chance do we have of seeing past these stories? Hopefully you're well armed now to spot these studies that simply show an association. But what about smoking and lung cancer? Fans of associational studies point out that the causal relationship between smoking and lung cancer was discovered simply through association. This is true, but the association is so strong that it's beyond reasonable doubt to be causal. How strong does it, an association have to be before you can say one thing causes another? There's no hard and fast rule for this, but the guidelines were laid out by British statistician Austin Bradford Hill, who conducted a study that measured if doctors who smoked had a greater chance of developing lung cancer. He found that those doctors who did smoke had 20 times the rate of lung cancer as those who didn't. He described a set of rules, now known as the Bradford Hill criteria, that can tell us how sure we are of an association being causal. He found that the relative risk of smoking in causing lung cancer was 20 times that of non-smokers. What's the relative risk of diabetes with eggs? How about red meat and colon cancer? As you can see, pathetically low. Any warnings involving red meat, colon and cancer should simply read red meat, colon, cancer. I've got a physics background and I know from experience you'd be laughed out of CERN if you made statements like some nutrition scientists and the media often do. Nerds can be extremely catty. I've got sympathy with nutrition scientists. It's harder to control large studies on nutrition compared to physics. But just because something is hard to do 
it doesn't mean we should invent implications of weak studies. It's also hard to run modern media channels, but my guess is that lying to your viewers is not the best long-term solution. Some quick, easy answers for you. Is coffee going to kill you? No. Is red meat really a worrying risk of colon cancer? No. And will listening to Phil Collins permanently damage your brain? Maybe. For any others that come up in the future, just ask yourself, is this an association? And whether it's a strong one or not. And if there is an association, can you find another study that shows no association or a different relationship between the variables? Associational studies aren't good at proving causation, but they can suggest that one thing doesn't cause another if there is no association. For example, Hong Kong has the longest lived population in the world and also eats more beef per person than anyone else. If beef were inherently bad for you, could you find that relationship? It is possible, but it certainly casts doubt on the idea that red meat is bad for you. Anyway, I'm off to eat some bacon and eggs. Will they save me and kill me at the same time, like some kind of Schrodinger's breakfast? I suppose you'll find out if I ever do another video.